And welcome everyone. Uh, it's, I think it's just going to be a short meeting because we don't have anyone from LT. Oh, do we? No, we don't. So I just ping Johanna and see if she will be able to join and Robin. So uh, good morning, good afternoon. And yes, I'm not Amber as Justin pointed out and I'm still transitioning from her account to get the ownership transferred to other people. So that's still in progress. And I just didn't want to delay this meeting for any other, any longer or another month. So, um, so that's why I'm just kind of like running over on, on her account. So um, quickly starting the meeting, I believe this meeting is all about the updates from the LT side and uh, what's going on in different groups and the technical side that usually Robin gives an update on. But I'll just start by um, asking Richard that if you want to share anything about documentation, if we need people, if we need more people for documentation and how it's going. I know it's been a while. We haven't heard much um, about uh, the documentation updates. So if you would like to share something on that front. Yeah, sure. Um, there's been a little bit of activity in the Slack channel. So that's always a good place to, to go. And so far we've been uh, uh, Johanna actually has been has noticed some things and and worked on them, so that's cool. Uh, as far as the videos go, um, if you haven't, uh, I'm just sort of speaking to an audience probably that's going to listen to this another time. If you haven't seen uh, Keith Jones's new videos, he did kind of like a video, uh, a movie almost, a two-hour video on how to uh, write a parser. So that's really interesting. I think uh, we'll be getting some more out here as time goes on. And I did have someone ask me about the, the um, newsletter. So we kind of had a little bit of an issue there uh, with the transition with Amber. So I was able to publish the newsletter, but only to the mailing list. And I'll probably do that again this week because I'll have another one for February ready to go in, in a day or so. Uh, but again, because of the, the Amber situation, I'm not putting it to the blog yet. Uh, so you'll see a newsletter come out. It'll come out on the mailing list because it's you know, easily formatted to, to go out on that uh, mechanism. And I think that's about it for my side. Cool. Uh, for the video, Richard, is it going to be part of the webinar or it's just like one of those online videos that we post on YouTube on Zeke's channel? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I was just talking about the, the Zeke channel videos. And yeah, th that's a good reminder too. The invitation is still open. If others want to contribute to that, just let me know and we'll figure out how to make it happen. Um, Keith was able to just record on his own and and up you know he he provided it to Amber and then she uploaded it but I have access to the channel now so I can upload stuff and my goal is to as soon as you complete something or I complete something or whoever get it up there quickly um, and also probably to do those little premieres so that we let people know it's going to be coming out and here's the day and then during the the first airing of it during that premiere have an open chat if anybody wants to ask questions uh, and then I guess on a related point. I've opened up comments on all the videos, uh, at least all the Zeke in Action videos um, from however long we've been doing them now. So if people ask questions there, I at the very least will try to answer. And if it's something that um, can't be answered just by me in a, in a comment, I will usually just direct people to the Slack channel to try to answer questions there. So we're trying to encourage a little more interactivity there. And I also went through like the last almost two years worth of comments that had either been unanswered or unpublished or whatever, and um, and said something, you know, tried to answer it or said thank you for your comment or whatever, just to let people know that uh, we were listening to them. So going forward, uh, I monitor those comments every day, and if anything comes out, I try to um, interact with the the people who leave the comments. That's great. Well, a little more interactive than it used to be. So, and then for the videos, is it just like open to anyone who wants to publish anything on Zeek and we just go ahead and do it? Uh, or is like, what's the frequency? Is it like regular or it's just like on demand? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, oh, let me put it this way. If we got a flood of videos, I would space them out. Um, Amber had previously been sort of like bunching them and I would prefer to sort of make them come out at a little more regular interval if, if we could. Uh, right now we're not getting a lot. So I basically just will publish as soon as we get them. If for some reason going forward, we've got a ton of people who wanted to contribute, yeah, then I would probably space them out a little bit using the premiere feature. Uh, but, but for now, you know, get it to me and I'll take a look at it. And uh, it can be very wide as far as the content. It can be how you use Zeek, how you can use data, how you write a script, how you, whatever it is. We've even had some talk about um, if anyone wanted to like live stream over Twitch, like developing something or whatever it is they're working on. 
we'd be open to that. I mean, it's not like watching, like I've, I've seen a couple of my favorite NHL players play like Call of Duty or something on Twitch, which I was like, wow, this is really amazing. I'm watching this kid play, you know, Call of Duty. So it's not quite that level, but I think some people would enjoy watching, you know, Seth or Christian or whoever do whatever it is that they do. That might be kind of cool. Um, we haven't actually done that yet, but you know, if anyone wants to try that as well. Uh, and then finally, one of my kids uh, is really into Minecraft and they were thinking about doing the Zeke logo in Minecraft. So I said, well, if you build it and you take a video of it, I'll put it on the Zeke channel uh, and we'll go for that demographic too. That's, that's awesome. Is, are there any um, thoughts, feedback, comments on the updates that Richard gave? You don't want to see me call uh, play Call of Duty. I, I I don't think I would know the first thing about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, this would be Zeke related. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. And, and naming your player on Call of Duty Zeke that would not count. <laughs> but my son is very curious about Minecraft, so uh, maybe we got something there. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was thinking about people just. I was thinking about people just streaming songs related to Zeke, like if it just has a word Zeke, and like, yep, this is. It has something related to Zeke, so why not, right? Wow. Cool. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, that was great and awesome update. Cool. Uh, and that's that reminds me. So it's good because uh, like jumping on to my other topic, so uh, training and testing subgroups. So we do lead two um, subgroups under LT, training and testing. Testing is led by Ashish and training is by Keith and me. So Ashish is not on the call, but if there are any people or if you guys know anybody who would like to or who would be interested in joining the testing uh, group, just let them uh, contact Ashish and she, he should be able to give all the details of how they can join and how they can provide useful data regarding um, Zeek testing. So I don't, I don't think there are much more updates on testing group. For training, um, that reminds me that that's a good thing because um, we were discussing about what we should consider as a training versus just a presentation or a video. And then all the videos and presentations that cannot be considered as training can be um, funneled through your way, Richard, if authors are willing to present them as a small videos. And if you if you want to like post it on Zeek related platform, because a lot of times uh, we have presentations that talk about Zeek, but they are more like broad, broader category, like they would have snort and there would be comparison, but they would not like really qualify or classify as training because then we will just have like we will not have a clear cut boundary of what we consider as training and what is not considered as training so all those we were thinking about all those videos and presentations that if people are submitting those then what to do up i mean we cannot just say no it's not considered as training but then we can route them to you and say that hey they might not qualify for a zeke approved training but they might be something worth of interest for our community if you want to post it on zeke channel so that is um, that is a really good useful point to take away from that. Um, I hundred percent agree with that. Um, all of the Zeke in action videos have they're either directly about something with Zeke, or there's a tie-in. So if you did a video on like I don't know uh, Wi-Fi hacking, but you never really talked about Zeke, that probably wouldn't qualify. But let's say you did a video on Wireshark and you said. You know, we're going to use Wireshark because it provides a different level of looking at network traffic. You know, Zeke would show it this way, Wireshark shows it this way. I think that would be completely appropriate. Yeah, yeah, that's really a good because we wanted to kind of like integrate and collaborate with other um, teams as well. So that will be a really um, good way for us not to lose on some good content and just make uh, our, our sites and our channels content rich. So that was one of the things that we discussed that we were trying to get a list of all the presentations and Zeke related content that can qual qualify as training, but then we didn't, we realized that we didn't have a proper definition of what we want to classify as training versus just a general Zeke material. So we are working on defining it um, in granular manner so that, and posting it online so that people who are trying to submit know that already that they do not kind of like qualify as like their content doesn't qualify as training. So we are working on that, getting a definition out. Um, I think Amber mentioned that in like last year, November, that right after, right before Zeek week, we had the Zeek approved training framework ready and set up, but it wasn't published. So this year, in the beginning of this year, right before Amber left, she actually published that with Johanna, with the help of Johanna and um, 
in DOM, they were able to publish it on our zeek.org website. So now you can see the whole process and how to submit any material or any content uh, through Zeek approved training framework. If you go on like zeek.org in community page, there is a training training page where, where we define what is a Zeek approved training framework, what are the guidelines and what are the guidelines for the author and what are the guidelines for the reviewer and how we, um, how we select the reviewers and who are uh, qualified kind of like as reviewers to review a training that is submitted. So it kind of like outlines the whole document. It's a pretty big document where there are steps and it's like pretty transparent that what the process is like and what's the timeline of the process. So if a potential author wants to get their training approved before they present it, it's kind of like one month prior they have to submit it so that we can get it through the reviewers and we give ample amount of time to reviewers to review it and give the feedback to the author. So that is online and published. I don't know that very much, very many people know about it already. So we kind of like our like mouth of word, we just go and say that, hey, it is online and if you want, you can go ahead and submit a training if you feel like that training can qualify as a proof training training uh, so that is the that is the updates on the zika proof training framework uh, that is still um, open for feedback because that is like very first rollout and we might have missed some important key points that you know this is the first time we are doing so that that's again open for the feedback so even if you don't have any training to submit if you are just going through a process and you see a keyhole that hey, there is this loophole and it might, you know, some some of the trainings that might kind of, that can kind of like take advantage or can, uh, can uh, like, there, there are like some parts where are, which are not properly defined. Just let us know and we will improve on it. So again, that's the first draft and we, it's kind of like a, a feedback uh, model where we would improve with time. And um, other than that, we are also working on providing regular Zeek trainings because we realized last year in Zeek Week that we had a lot of people interested in training, but they couldn't register because of the Zoom room limit. And because it was all virtual, we couldn't accommodate all of them. And then we got a kind of like pretty uh, heavy feedback that if you can make them regular, then people who have missed it can kind of like go ahead and take it whenever it is uh, happening live again. I mean, online virtual live. So we are... Uh, working on providing those, at least the, to start with just the two trainings that we have right now, introduction to Zeek and advanced scripting that we provide in Zeek week, we are trying to make them regular at least twice a year, because uh, one time we already have like in Zeek week, uh, in the second half, we already provided in Zeek week. But if we, can pro if, we, if we can provide those two trainings in the first half of the year, then that would be useful because, um, you know, we already uh, like, it's kind of like a hit and miss at the time of Zeek week, people know about it, people don't know about it. So it's kind of like a pretty, Haywire situation by the end of the year. So I'm working on um, providing those as regular. Like I'm uh, asking uh, Keith and Ashish for their schedule and what kind of like input they need and what, uh, which um, dates and times work best for them and then make it regular at least twice a year. So that's another important thing that we're working on. And then the third part that we're working on is getting more training Zeek approved. We, we just don't want people from LT or people from the team Zeek team to just get the trainings approved. We want also like a diverse profile. So if people outside of LT are providing any trainings, then we would like to get them Zeek approved and uh, host their reference material on our Zeek.org site. So we are working on one uh, training called virtually testing. They have a series called ZQ, which is ZQ University, and they have like a bunch of small videos, like four or five hours worth of material, where they start with the very basic of what is Zeek and how to install it. And then they go into a little bit uh, on the advanced level. So we are working with them to get their content uh, as Zeek approved. They are again nonprofit, and then they just give out that content for free. So it's not even like um, paid, it's kind of like open to public. So we are working with them to get their material approved. Uh, through the training framework. So those are the three major, major parts of updates that I wanted to give uh, on the training subgroup. And again, it's it's um, open if people want to join or there's a Slack channel as well for training. So if just people want to, wants to keep tabs on what's going on, I always post updates from our meetings there. That's, that is the meeting we have bi-weekly every Friday, every second Friday of the, um, of the month in uh, morning at 8 a.m. So um, yeah, if you guys know uh, any anyone who, who would be interested in joining the training or would kind of like benefit from it, then just uh, direct them our way. So I know that was a big chunk of update. So any suggestions, feedback, 
thoughts on any of the any of the part that I that I discussed, then I would be more than happy to hear. Just just a quick note, I will add an item about that in the Zeke newsletter because I went to the website and I don't like I couldn't find if you go to slash training, it finds it. I don't see anything in the menus. So I'll make sure people find out about it through the newsletter. That's a good point. Uh, we discussed that in our uh, uh, bi-weekly meeting as well, that it is like it is hidden. So if you go on Zeke.org and on commun on the top right on community drop down, there is a page called training and that's the page where everything is defined. So maybe we want to um, put it a little up. So instead of like having uh, to dig through it, if it's just like on one of the top tabs, then it would be easier for people to find. And oh, I, uh, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted yeah. to um, ask Johanna and see if we can improve where exactly it's situated on the website, then that would be easier for people to follow. But thanks, if, yeah, if more people, it's good to, to listen to that feedback because if we have more people uh, asking for the same thing, it's easier to get that done. So thanks, Richard, for sharing that. Sure. Yeah, and I, I missed it. I thought I had looked in the right place, but I missed it. So yeah, thanks. Fatima, are there um, topics that are particularly tricky to cover in training right now where you could really use some help or you know, input or feedback? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So one of the topics that keep coming very frequently is uh, how to deploy Zeek in production. So we always talk about installing Zeek manually and standalone. Anytime we run Zeek, it's just standalone mode. And mm. in actual production, people don't use standalone. They use clusterized version. So we never um, cover the clusterization part because it is so tricky and it is so environment specific that one wrong kind of like configuration can mess cluster up and you will see a whole bunch of pack packet capture loss. So that's definitely uh, an area that we would like to get help uh, from people who are expertise in that area that can explain the clusterization and how different components work and how you can actually spin up a cluster with the limited amount of resources, resources people would have. So right. definitely that would be one area we would really like people. Right, that's, a, that's an area that's about to change a lot. So that's, um, so um, we should talk. This is, this is cool. Now I'm really glad I asked. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Christian. Uh, I mean, I can follow up with, with that. Yeah. Because... But yeah, we are always looking for people who can uh, volunteer to <laughs> give training because it's kind of like a pretty decent amount of time is spent on creating the training and content. So yeah, it's also it's it's been a while since I last watched them. I. I uh... The last one I saw was Ashish for sure, but I um, I think it was probably a year and a half ago, something like that. So I should check them out again. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of things might have changed in eight years, training then and training now. Oh, no, a, a year and a half ago. Like, like, you know, oh, a year and a half. I thought yeah, you said yeah, eight yeah. years no, and a no, half. No, no, like, <laughs> when you compiled it with gear reels, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> I apologize, my hearing. No, 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 it's all good. It's morning. all great. You were... Thank you for all the energy in this. It's very cool. Sure. Thanks. Um, any other questions or suggestions or comments on any of the topics that has been that have been discussed in this meeting? All good. All right. Cool. So thank you so much, everyone, to join uh, for joining this call this morning. And um, hopefully we will have uh, Johanna and Robin in our next call so that we can get updates from the LT and technical side of the Zeek. So, and I will, uh, if there is nothing else, uh, yeah, feel free to post any questions or any comments in our Zeek Slack channel. We have different Slack channels for different things like training, testing, documentation has its own Slack channel, general, and the news and development. And team is, is um, like closed, but everyone is sharing every, all the channels. So even if you have a development question, post it in development Slack channel and people would be able to reach out to you back. Hey Fatima, so, I do have yeah. one quick thing too. I um, We found out that the link that was on the website for uh, joining Slack had expired. So um, I think Tim was able to provide a new link that doesn't expire. So if you're listening to this and you tried to get into the Slack and you weren't able to, you should be able to now um, do that. And if for some reason it, does, it still doesn't work, um, probably just hit, you know hit us up on Twitter. Um, we're watching that account uh, really, really closely. So um, yeah, if you have any problems getting into Slack, just hit us up on Twitter uh, or mailing list if you're part of that. 
Perfect. And That's yes, uh, yes, I did update the invite and yes, it is working. So Slack bot lets me know every single time somebody joins the server now. Awesome. <laughs> Cool, that's a great piece of um, update that if people want to join Slack, then the new link is available. So is, uh, is there, a, is there a, a method we share the link, Richard, do you remember? Or it's just like mailing list and people reaching out? I don't remember, but was, it there, was there a blog post where we can update the link as well with the new information? Uh, I can put it in the newsletter. And if you go to uh, what is it? I think if, if you go to zeek.org and you go to community, that's where, let's see, it's under connect. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to community and connect and oh, there's sorry. a link there, that'll have the invite. Oh, it is saying this link is no longer active for me. Huh? Oh no. Oh, well, we'll figure that out. So cool. So that will be updated there. Um, okay. Anything else? Oh, you know what, Tim? I'm wondering if the direct link off the menu is the one that might be expired, but the one you put in the page is still working. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's I only updated the one. I only updated the one that was in the page. Let me go. I'll go look at it right now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Trying to make it easy for our users, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> That's yeah, because I was thinking that if Slack channel link is no longer working, then how we communicate that to people who are, you know, who wants to find that link. So yeah, that, that would be easier I'll, if it's posted. I'll put it out. Over. Yeah, I'll put it out right over, over Twitter right now, just as a reminder. It's probably not a bad thing just to periodically let people know, hey, if you want to talk to us on Slack, here it is. Yeah, that's good. That's good to know though. Um, cool. So um, so that is another piece of update. Is there anything else people would want to share? Or want to ask? We could mention that I think Robin is eagerly looking for uh, people to try out the new version of the Zeek agent. Um, so he's been putting a lot of work into this, I think, lately. and. Uh, there's a new repo for it. This is uh, github.com zeek, um, zeek dash agent dash v2 because it's basically replacing this, this older version and much easier to install. And if people just follow the readme, then you know um, he'd love any feedback. Um, I tried it out a couple of days ago and it was actually working terrifically. So um, if people are interested, check it out and give it a go. Nice. Perfect. That's another good piece of um, update. So yeah. Um, Robin, it, it can be kind of like considered one of the technical side updates that Robin is actually looking for people who can um, try and test out the agent. And if there is any feedback, if they let Robin know, then that would be really great help from the community side. So thanks, Christian, for sharing that. And um, thanks, Johanna, for joining. Um, and I would just quickly ask uh, for, two, for two minutes, I would just quickly ask Johanna if she would like to share anything on any updates from the LT site, then that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, sorry about messing up joining today. I'm not sure what you talk, uh, talked about already, but uh, since our last meeting, there was a small thing um, of the LT. So first, the uh, um, Seek Leadership team had, had another meeting with the Merge Masters, which you might have heard about, and we talked about the Seek agent a lot. So if, if you're interested in that, you should uh, look at the meeting notes of that. Um, the other big thing that happened for the LT is that um, we resolved the situation with a surprise big legal bill that we got a couple of months ago. I cannot really talk much about that, but the final solution is, um, is okay for us. And um, Apart from that, I don't think there's anything really great new. Uh, we up slightly updated our um, election process for the next elections, which will happen in approximately August of this year. Um, that was in um, December, and I think we had called for um, feedback on that in October or something like that. I think that was all of the big news that have happened in the last few months. 
Thanks, Johanna, for the updates. Um, are there any questions or comments on anything that Johanna shared from LT updates? All right, if nothing, then um, yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for joining and thanks so much, Johanna, for joining at the end in the last minute and giving us the updates. I really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in next month's call. So enjoy your evening and have a nice day, everyone. Thanks, bye, Take bro. Care. Thanks, folks. Thanks.